Hello and welcome to another episode of Ezoic Explains. I'm Whitney Wright. I am usually behind the camera if you don't recognize me, um, but today I'm going to show you how to create engaging and eye-catching thumbnails uh, for your YouTube videos. Uh, Backlinko recently published an article all about how to increase YouTube views in 2019, and the first item on their list was to create an engaging thumbnail. Um, according to YouTube, 9 out of 10 most viewed videos on YouTube use a custom thumbnail. Um, and so this is the face of your video before anyone ever even clicks on it. It's what's going to grab people's attention. Um, so you want it to be eye-catching, otherwise um, risk losing views. So today I'm going to show you how to create a thumbnail that will engage viewers quickly and make your YouTube video stand out. Uh, Backlinko suggests making BOGY thumbnails, which stands for blue, orange, green, and yellow. The reason these four colors are a top choice for thumbnails is because YouTube is primarily red, black, and white. So you want to try to not use these colors so that you stand out. Um, you can, of course, still use red, black, and white, but I would say use them sparingly um, and don't necessarily make them your main colors. In our Ezoic Explained videos, the majority of our thumbnails are made out of almost any other color than red, black, and white. Um, and I primarily make the thumbnails as colorful as possible and use our Ezoic green color for the font, um, which will contrast nicely with red because they are complementary colors. You can certainly just make a thumbnail with a background color of some kind. Um, a lot of companies do this, especially if they're trying to be a bit more sleek. But if you really want to stand out and you're able to, I suggest putting a little bit more time into it and consider uh, thumbnails for popular YouTube channels like Good Mythical Morning. They're not just a face and colorful background. They're bold, maybe a little bit silly, and incorporate other overlaid images and texts. So for example, um, consider this more recent thumbnail that I made of Tyler for our Ezoic Explains videos. It was about anti-targeting measures taken by Google and Apple more recently. Um, and so when I thought of targeting, I thought of hunting. Um, and so I just got a background. I Tyler posed like that for me gave him a hat, gave him a water gun. And the reason why I gave him a water gun actually is because Google um, will not allow ads on gun websites and anything that has guns on them. So in order to make this compliant with that, I gave him a water gun. Um, most of the time you're gonna be okay, but you do wanna double check and see if things are blocked by um, Google ads. Um, even archery is kind of up in the air sometimes because it is a sport and it is an Olympic sport. Just make sure that you know what is and isn't allowed. Um, and so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this thumbnail. It's a little bit silly. Um, it's me dressed up as Bob Ross because um, when I think of creating and making, I think of painting or drawing of some kind. And when I think of painting, I think of Bob Ross. Um, so I'm going to show you how to create this. It's really not that hard. You are going to need Photoshop, um, but I'm going to walk you through each step and it really, um, if you have no Photoshop experience, it's really not going to be too hard for you. So to begin, um, I do want to find, um, first an image of Bob Ross that I want to use as the predominant image in the picture. Um, and so I searched Bob Ross and then you're going to want to go to settings and click advanced search. So I always just try to take large ones um, you can do that right there. And then I want to make sure I have an image of me and you want to make sure that you have a, a picture of their face that is similar in uh, scale and similar in the direction it's facing. So here I have opened up this picture of Bob Ross from the internet in Photoshop. I also have um, this, which this is um, a screenshot of Photoshop of a thumbnail I made before. Because what I'm going to do in this, I'm going to put this as the canvas. So it's as if I will be painting a thumbnail Photoshop. And from there, you're going to want to create a new template for Photoshop. And so I usually do 26 by 17. Um, it's just kind of the default. It's a good landscape size and I can always downsize the photo when I'm finished with it so that it doesn't take up as much space. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to take the little dotted box right here on the left hand side. It's the rectangular marquee tool and you're going to click it and then you're going to drag it from one corner to the other. And if you click command C or control C for a PC, that is copy. 
Command V. And then we're going to use this move tool. And so if you click on it and then you click on one of the layers in this photo, you can pick it up and move it. And from here, I'm going to go and select that. Again, Command C, Command V. And that will paste it in there. So then I'm just going to move it and uh, you can rotate it. So if you click on it with that tool, the move tool, um, little arrows will show up little boxes will show up in the corners and if you go near those you can there's a little rotate tool and you can actually rotate the image so I wanted to make sure that it fit onto the easel um, and so then I can also resize it from there um, you want to make sure that it scales correctly so if you hold down option while you're using those little boxes to make this photo it will keep it the proportion that it needs to be so you don't get kind of weird stretched out images or fonts. So from here, I'm gonna create a copy of Bob Ross. And if you look on the right hand side here, these are the layers that I am creating. Um, I've already kind of done this beforehand, so it's a bit faster. But um, these layers represent anything additionally that you put on this. So when I copied and pasted this picture of Bob Ross, it also created a layer. And so then when I also copy and pasted the screenshot of the Tyler thumbnail, it made a new layer. And so this makes it easier because you can actually toggle right here where these layers are and you see those eyeballs right there. That means you can see the layer. If you wanna get rid of a layer just so you don't have to see it while you're working on something else, you can click the eye and it will disappear. This is really nice. Um, like I said, if you're trying to work on something else, what you can also do right here is click a layer and click this lock button and that means it will lock it in place. So no matter if you're trying to pick up something from another layer and move it, that layer will remain in place. Um, so I created a duplicate layer. You can do this by right clicking on the layer you want to duplicate. And there is a, an option a little bit down the menu that says duplicate layer. Um, and I like to do this just as a safeguard in case I need something from this original layer. What I need from this layer is um, the hand and paintbrush, part of a shirt, and pretty much his whole head um, because I want those in front of the painting. So what you're gonna do, you're going to select, this is called the lasso tool. And there's a couple different types of the lasso tool. I'm going to use the magnetic lasso tool. And this actually makes it so um, as you go along an edge in the photo, it is a magnet to a line. Um, and so it's super great for selecting specific things. Um, and the more you click, the more accuracy you get. And I'm just gonna click and as I go along, I click it so it stays accurate and it is just hugging his hand right there. Um, you do have to complete the circuit when you're doing this, otherwise it won't create a selection. Um, and so I'm going to select this whole section right here. And what you can actually do, um, I'll show you this in a second, but what you can actually do while after you've selected this is if you missed a section or got too much of something else, you can go back in before you do anything else and um, you can add or subtract parts of this selection. So as you can see, it's a dotted flashing line now. Uh, that means it is selected and that's the only thing that's selected in this photo. So what I've done is I have command seed, I've copied that hand and paintbrush, and what I've just selected is the eraser tool. Um, and this is good for cleaning stuff up. Um, if you see right here where I'm going, um, if you click on this right here, there's the size and there's the hardness. Hardness just means how sharp the eraser is going to be. So for you know important lines like his hand, there's a definite edge to that. Um, so I would use a harder eraser for that. Whereas the end of the brush there, it is you know pieces of a brush or hair. So it can be a little bit softer. And so for the very edge of the brushes there, I'm probably going to use a softer eraser. Another important tool that you can use um, for the eraser, for the pen, um, is you can change the size of the brush um, by holding down command and then these brackets right here. Um, and that will make it smaller or larger. Um, and that's really helpful so you don't have to go into this menu every time you want to change the size of a brush. Um, another useful tool is if you hold down command and then you press the plus or minus button that will zoom in or zoom out on your image and it's really helpful as well. It's just some keyboard shortcuts that will make your life a lot easier if you can just remember them. You can also change the opacity of an eraser. So you can see right here like I'm erasing but it's not 
quite getting rid of everything. Um, there's 100% opacity, so it got rid of everything. Um, there's the soft edge brush and the hard edge brush. So I'm going to go in with my hard edge brush, and I'm going to clean up his hand right here. Another important keyboard shortcut is Command Z, and that is going to undo the previous move you just did. So if you do something and you're like, ah, like I kind of messed it up, I'm, I need to go back and start that part over, you can just Command Z until you're back to a part that you want. And um, if you do Command Shift Z, it will undo that undo. Um, it'll go back to what you'd just done. So there's a, some other keyboard shortcuts that can be really helpful during this. Um, and once you know how to do them, you're going to really fly through some of these steps. Otherwise, you have to go back and click on the toolbar all the time. And I'll be making a guide that um, will be attached to this. So you can have all the keyboard shortcuts. I'll review each tool that we used in here um, so you can remember. And I'll make sure and include any notes like um, the eraser or brush tool, you know, is hardness and softness and opacity. So now when we turn back on the layer of Bob Ross, um, I've moved the hand so it's in the right place. And you can see that it is in front of the photo now, which is just what we wanted. So we want to do the same thing with his shirt and um, pretty much half of his head because we want that in front as well. As you can see, I am using the option, the shift keys to get in closer to his face. Um, I didn't get as close as I wanted to. You can use Option to erase sections, or you can use Shift to add sections. Just hold it down while you're using your mouse. And what I'm doing here is I, this layer, when it was made, I copied and pasted it, so I have his head just like I want it. And, um, but it pasted below other layers. And what that means is it's going to be behind. So basically the lower a layer is on this list right here, um, the more behind it's going to be, it's going to be in the background. So you see right here, I have a picture of my face that I'll be using for this demonstration um, I, that I've taken previously that works. Um, I'm facing pretty much forward. Um, and here I've just used the normal lasso tool. Um, I've copied it, Command C. And now I will use Command V and that creates a new layer and brings my face in. And from here, what you're going to do is you can, if you click the layer, you can also change the opacity of the layer. Um, and so I use this when I'm trying to line something up underneath it. Uh, so I want to make sure that my eyes and mouth and nose are basically in the same places that uh, Bob Ross's are uh, because I want it to look proportional as much as possible. But that's pretty good. That's about as good as we're going to get. I'm not Bob Ross. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to just erase softly. Um, so I'm going to just click the eyeball button so that it goes away for a little bit. And I'm going to go back to my original Bob Ross layer. And I want this section of his forehead and um, cheeks where his hair is coming over because I want that to come over my face. From here, I'm just going to use that eraser tool again. And you can spend a lot of time doing this stuff. I'm just going to do it pretty quickly on this video so um, you can see kind of what's possible. I often borrow from other parts of photos. Um, if, like I said, like the forehead hair, um, I just keep adding in layers. And you can actually rename the layers if you're getting confused. If you right click on one of the layers, it should say layer details. And that will um, pop up a window and you can name the layer. So you could always name it like Bob Ross forehead hair or Whitney face. Um, and so right now what I'm doing is I selected my face because my, my color, my skin color is just a little bit different than his because um, he has some studio lighting. And so what I'm gonna do is I have the layer selected and I'm gonna go to image adjustments and then I'm gonna click color balance. This is the tool I probably use most for changing um, the skin tones and tones of pictures. Um, so what we're gonna do is, as you can kind of see from uh, what's left of his neck there, his skin is a little bit more yellowy red than mine is in the photo. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use these adjustments. Another thing that you might want to know about the selection tool, whether it be the lasso or the marquee tool, is um, it is selected. And then if you want to deselect it, you can just click the Command D and that will deselect. Um, otherwise, it will have it selected and any tool that you're trying to use will only work within those lines. I could just leave it like this, but I do like to add a little bit more color than just this plain white background. 
So what I'm gonna do, this is the rectangle tool, and if you hold it down, you can get other shapes as well. So when you're making this shape, if you want it to stay proportionate, like if you wanted to make a perfect square or a perfect triangle, you could just hold down the shift and then when you drag the object into place, it will keep it um, in the shape that it should be. Um, I want a rectangle in this case, so I don't need to hold down the shift button. So as I'm gonna select this section right there with the rectangle tool, um, your fill might be turned off, so you can just go up here where it X'd out the fill and I'm going to select that green. And what you want to do from here is you want to move the layer so that it's on top of everything except for um, the Bob Ross layer. And I'm just erasing the green off of the Bob Ross layer right here so that I'm the only thing that shows through. So then I actually went with purple because there's too much green, I thought, with um, the forest and the Zoic Explains logo. Um, but what you're going to do is you always save it as a Photoshop file, um, and that's a PSD file. And so you always want to save that because that's going to save all of these layers in case you want to go back in and change something. One of the last things you want to do if you want to put this on the web is make sure that the image size is correct. Um, so right now this is way too big for the internet. It would take forever to load. Um, and especially because it's just going to be a thumbnail, I can reduce the size. Um, and so the resolution for the web should be 72. If you're printing it, you want 300 because that will basically create more pixels per inch, um, which, you know, when you're printing something, you want as many pixels as possible to make it really clear. But for the web, it just needs to be 72. Generally, I like to start the size to be 1000 in the width and then um, save it. And you can always check and make it smaller if it's still not quite the size you want. Another thing you can do to make it smaller is when this window pops up, um, image quality. Again, if you were printing or if you know you were in photography, you would really want this to be high. Um, since it's just going as a thumbnail on the web, you can make it a, uh, you can set the quality lower um, and that's going to save you space as well. When you upload a thumbnail to YouTube, when you're making a YouTube video, I believe it can only be two megabytes. Um, and so that's why you want to make sure that this is small enough. And then that's your photo. Um, it's fun. It's eye-catching. It's not using red, black, or white. Um, in fact, it's using colors that are the opposite of that with the green. Um, and I'll be using this as the thumbnail for this video. And that is how you make an engaging and eye-catching thumbnail. Um, basically, just don't use the colors that YouTube uses. And um, I know Photoshop can be intimidating, but um, it's just something you have to practice at. And it really isn't too hard once you know a couple of the basic tools uh, to create a thumbnail. And so this has been another episode of Ezoic Explains. Catch you next time.